Hello and welcome to another design clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn Wolfslagle and today I'm going to be using three of the stamp sets from our Beautiful Bouquet series and I'm going to be using them all together with a little white heat embossing and Zig Clean Color markers. I'm working on Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor cardstock today and because I'm doing a lot of heat embossing I am going to be treating my paper with an embossing buddy bag in between each stamping. Like I mentioned, I'll be using all three of our released Beautiful Bouquet series. This is the Mums, and there's a lot of really dainty details in this stamp set. So I'm using the Misty and pressing down really well to make sure that I get a very good impression. I want to make sure that Versamark ink is transferring to the paper. I'll use the Hero Arts White Embossing Powder to cover the entire image. And then after I knock off the excess, I'll go ahead and use my heat tool to melt that down. You'll know it's all melted when all of the lines are nice and shiny. And now I'm going to come in with the Beautiful Bouquet's Ranunculus. I'm going to ink that up with Versamark as well, and I'm overlapping my image just a bit here. I want this to look seamless, and I want the florals to cover the entire background. Now after I cover this with embossing powder, I don't, I don't want the images to overlap. I want to make them look like one is on top of the other. So I'm going to use a small paintbrush to just knock away any areas of that embossing powder that I don't want to heat emboss now. So the area that I've already heat embossed, I want that to sit on top of the one I'm about to heat set. So once I'm all done heat embossing this, it'll look like the ranunculus are under the mums. And you can see here that it now looks like one seamless continuous pattern. So I'm just going to continue filling in the rest of the background, and this time I'm going to switch to the beautiful bouquet dahlia. And now here you can see the entire background is covered with this seamless floral pattern, and now we can start doing our coloring. I chose to use Ziggs today as I have not played with them very much. I want to say this is my second time really using them. So today, when I started this piece, I really did not have um, a solid plan for it. Didn't know if this was going to be turned into a card or not. I really was just doing it for the daily marker 30 day color challenge and I thought it was a great opportunity to get to know the Zig clean color markers, how they react, get to know the different colors. So in this one piece you'll see me doing a lot of different techniques. In this first set on the ranunculus I am a little more detailed. I'm actually trying to add in some shadows just trying to see how these colors move about, how they layer up, how they mix. Then as I move on to the rest of the project, um, I'm going to do much lighter applications, much more washy applications. And again, I, did, I didn't have a set plan. I really just wanted to get to know this medium. So I'm using just about every color that I own <laughs> in this piece. Again, I want to see what the colors look like when they're super vibrant and concentrated. I want to see how they wash out, how light they get. And then again, I come over dry areas with the other markers to see how they layer up, how they build up on each other, checking out their transparency. Um, I actually really like them. I like the vibrancy of these. Uh, traditional watercolors tend to be a bit more muted. And so I do really like the vibrancy of these. They do react a little bit more with uh, water after dry than your traditional watercolors do. They're, they're a little more on the distress ink side when it comes to being reactive. Uh, so you could wet it and lift up quite a bit of color. I didn't notice a ton of staining on the ones that I tried to lift. But I kind of, as I'm watching this back, and I don't know if you guys, even those who don't make YouTube channels, have you ever tried filming your process like this. Just turn on your phone and film it because as I watched this back, there were a lot of um, times or areas that I was looking at this going, ooh, that gives me an idea if I just did this portion on a card or if I just did that technique on a card. There are several stopping points in this video that I could see myself stopping and using the card as is or using the background as is to create a card. So if you've never recorded yourself doing any sort of coloring or water coloring, whatever it may be, it's a great learning tool. And I would highly suggest that you try it out because again, you can see where you went right and you can see where maybe you went wrong, where you should have stopped or say, you know, I probably should have continued on with this. So for me, it's really there. It's not only therapeutic to do it, but it's a great learning tool to watch back and kind of pick up 
where you're where you're going wrong and where you're going right more importantly because <laughs> you don't want to a lot of the times I walked away from this piece for example thinking hmm, yeah that was fun but I don't think I really like how it ended up um, I don't know I'm not really liking it and I kept coming back to it and walking away and coming back and each time I came back I found a part that I liked more and more it, it started to whereas be, when I first stopped I was like mm, hot mess <laughs> as I kept coming back to it I was like oh you know what that's not so bad oh I really like how this part turned out so in the end I eventually decided to trim out the dahlias and the mums that area that's going from the top right hand all the way around to the bottom left hand corner I ended up cutting out the ranunculus even though I really liked the way that the ranuncula the ranunculus was colored um, in this particular layout I preferred it with just the mums and the dais so I was able to trim out those ranunculus and I can use them on another project and then I was left with just that um, that outer border of the mums and the dais and that's the part that I chose to use in my finished card. So again, when I walked away from it, I thought for sure this was just going to um, just be like a little Instagram post, like, hey, check out how you can layer all these stamp sets together. It looks really cool. And as I came back and kept looking at it, I decided, you know what? I can turn this into a card. This is actually really pretty. So again, try filming yourself, watching it back, picking up some pointers because um, you're never going to know unless you watch back what you're doing. Um, a lot of the times we get from point A to C and we can't remember what we did at point B. <laughs> so this is a historical record of how you got to point C. So it's always good to watch back your process. Secondly, walk away. Walk away and come back because I guarantee you when you come back and look at it, it is going to look much different. You're going to be much more accepting of it because you're now the first thing you see will be the things you like rather than the things that you were obsessing over that went wrong while you were doing it. Okay, so now while I liked the white background underneath those flowers, I wanted to add a little bit something more. So now I'm going to take some Distress Ink and I'm working with Peacock Feathers now and I'm going to add a soft wash in the background here. I'm working on the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper again and I'm just watering it down and spreading it out. And then I decide, you know, let me add in some green. I want to pull in some of that green from the leaves and at this point I'm thinking I'll use that Friend Die Cut which is inked with Twisted Citron. So I'm going to add a little bit of that in here as well. I'm going to come in and dry this back and then lay my uh, flowers on top to see if that's enough or if I like it because again guys I'm completely winging it here <laughs> got an idea but not sure exactly where I'm going with it yet so I'm gonna lay those on top double check and I feel like I want more I feel like I still want some more and I'm not quite liking well it, I mean I like it but I want more I just want more. So now I'm going to come directly to the paper with an ink blending tool and I'm going to sponge on a heavier concentration of that peacock feathers. And then I'm going to, um, am I adding in more twisted citron? No. I'm going to come in with some water and I'm going to create the, um, make it look like there was water spilled on this basically is what I'm doing. I'm creating um, water stains or water rings by bringing the water in from the edge and just letting it pool there. And then to break up that edge, I'm gonna splatter water, concentrating it along the edge where the wet paper or the water meets the dry paper and try to break up that edge. So it's not a hard brushed edge. Looks a little more organic. So I keep fussing with that for a little bit. Once I'm all done, I will heat set that, lift up any excess water and now it's time to assemble this card, finally. <laughs> so I've die cut the panel using the gift card layers die, and now I will adhere the florals on top using some 3M foam tape. And I was originally gonna use that Friend die cut by Simon Says Stamp, inked and twisted citron. I decided since I had so much color, I needed a break in that, so I die cut another one from plain white cardstock, and I'll be adhering that with some trimmed down 3M foam as well. And then the parts that are laying directly on top of the florals, I'll use the multimedia mat for that. I'm also going to stamp a, it's another small greeting from our hand-lettered thanks stamp set, so it will say, you're the best friend. 
and um, I'm going to be heat embossing that in white as well on black cardstock. So as usual, anti-static buddy bag and then heat emboss that. I'll trim that down so it fits nicely back behind here and I'll adhere that directly to the panel using again the multi-matte medium, multi-media mat. I always say it backwards. So I just finished this off by adhering the entire panel to a top folding A2 card base and then added a few sequins from Simon Says Stamp and Pretty Pink Posh. Really hope that you guys enjoyed today's card. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Daily Markers 30 Day Color Challenge. It is a lot of fun and it's a way to be a little creative every day. Don't forget to check the description box below for all of the supplies and links to more on today's project and for more inspiration. Again, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.